How's it going everybody? My name is Charlie Thompson and I am the owner and founder of Apozzo Studio and in today's tutorial we're going to be covering this kind of effect here, the gunshot effect. So um, we're going to quickly jump straight into Houdini here. I already have my pistol and bullet. I am going to show you how I got these because the models are free. So I came over here to 3dmodelhaven.com and if you come down to the browse models and click on guns it'll come up with the selection of guns they have for free so I went on to the Clog 01 um, and you just come down and do the first one here which is the 1.1 meg come out of that come up to file and import as an FBX find the file and just click import and it'll import this little sub network here so what you want to do is you want to click into this it'll all be messed up but what you need is just this clog low uh, the magazine full low and the bullet low um, so first of all what I'm going to show you is if you go into the bullet low uh, just going to delete that for the moment um, you're going to have this as default and what you want to do is you actually want to keyframe the bullet coming out so I went to 30 frames in I keyframe the translate and the rotation went to 15 more frames in so to 45 and I, I translate the y-axis uh, which was that way um, and I also changed the rotation so we've got the bullet kind of rotating as it comes out here at a fairly decent speed so we've got that there and that is all you need to do for the model um, and its animation. Now what we can do is we can actually create them into a collider, uh, a collision geometry. So we're going to highlight the clog low geometry which is the gun. We're going to come up to this tab here, we're going to click on collisions. We're going to create it as a static object. Uh, we're going to do exactly the same for the bullet. Uh, click static object. We're going to jump back out and this should import um, create a dot network so we can leave that named auto dot network or you can change it to whatever you like pyro effects uh, gunshot effect but we're gonna jump in here press L to reorganize everything so we are going to add the collision now so if we just disable the geometry uh, I'm also gonna come up here and hide other objects so now we haven't got anything in here the gun we've only got the bullet because we haven't hidden that yet but uh, if you come over to bullet data and we just show this up and at the moment this is what it looks like and we don't want that so we're going to come down to this section here we're going to click on it and we're going to go to concave and as you'll see the gun is now there and in detail which is exactly what we want so now we're just going to disable that and display the geometry again. Uh, I am going to hide it for a second though, just so we can do the bullet here. So we're going to highlight the bullet. We are going to do exactly the same. And as you can see, you've got the detail there. So we're going to hide, uh, unhide all these so we can see the gun and the bullet. Um, as you'll notice now, if we scroll through, the bullet doesn't actually come out from 30 to 45, and that is because we haven't checked this use deforming geometry. So if we click that, uh, we go back to frame one, you'll see the animation is there. So this bit here is basically, if you have a bit of a an animation to an object, if you click this here, it will then import the animation in, so you can use it as a collider. So next, you want to actually add in a, an emitter, so where the smoke will be coming out. So let's type in sphere. We're going to change this to emitter. Oh. Click to ease. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to jump into this. We're going to change the primitive type to polygon mesh so we can add a bit of detail. I'm going to change that to 100, 100 for the rows and columns. We're also going to change the uniform scale to 0.15. I already know that's the scale that we need it at, so um, yeah, that's perfect. So we're going to add in a trans 
transform node as well so we can move it to the location it needs to be in so back up here we're going to unhide other jobs uh, we're going to unhide other objects and we're going to change it to show all objects so we can place it right at the barrel of the gun so we're going to press spacebar 2 this brings it as the top kind of view here i'm going to bring this down here zoom in a little bit we want it half in the barrel and half out so just there i'm going to press spacebar 3 and it's down here and we actually want to move that up to oh, at the moment for some reason i have it locked on to the grid so we're going to uncheck that if you have that checked uncheck it if you ever have that problem I'm going to move it down so it's central there and that's perfect absolutely perfect so now the emitter is completely done you can add a bit of a deformed geometry to it so you can add in a mount in a node possibly um, but for this we don't need to so now we want to select this we want to come up to the pyro effect up here and we're going to change or well, we're going to add in the explosion so give that a bit of time and it automatically puts you straight back into the dot network so we have our collision and we also have our pyro so now i'm just going to quickly come into the smoke object come up to the division size and we're going to change that to something a little bit higher so we've got 0.06 this will just mean that we're able to get through the process a lot quicker and we won't have a, such a long simulation so here as you'll notice we have like a box you can make this box as big as you like we're going to move this just around about here bring this down here this is where all the smoke and pyro is going so that's roughly okay i'm going to maybe bring this out a tad more we can also if you don't want to do this um you can also come over to the gas resize and change the max bound and unclamp that which means basically uh, if anything comes out of here it'd be absolutely fine if that's clamped it'll get sh straight up deleted so uh, i'm just going to keep that checked because i know for a fact that the smoke won't come out of here and that is perfectly fine this bit this option here is mostly for say you got a particle simulation of some water maybe going into a bowl and one particle has flown off the map, um, flown off the screen here, and it hasn't deleted, and it's miles and miles and miles into the scene. Um, you put this in here, and it will automatically delete anything that's outside of this box. But um, we're going to leave that at that. We're going to come over to the bounds, and we're going to actually move these up to around about roughly there for both of them. Uh, now, what we can do is we can go into the actual pyro solver so at the moment if i play this you'll see that there's nothing much happening to be honest you got the bullet coming through which brings it a bit of a trail here uh, there's not much of an explosion at all uh, and it also looks like it's kind of going up which we don't want we want the pyro effect to actually be going that way which is the z-axis um, which if we have a look over here we highlight this buoyancy direction and it'll show buoyancy direction x y and z so x y and z so we don't want it to be going up um, if you don't know where the x and the y is the y if i just quickly uh, jump out of here and hide that so you'll see this little red thing here it's also down in this corner here so the x is that way the Z is that way, and the Y is up and down. So Y here, if there's a line going in that direction, that means it's a positive. If there's no line going in that way, it's a negative. So we want to go in a positive Z axis. So we're going to go back into here, and we are going to come over to Z, and we're going to put 1. We're also going to change the buoyancy lift uh, to 10 as well, which basically pushes out a bit more of a force next you'll notice that we've got the gas release if you come over to the second tab here um, actually in green which means that it has keyframes so we're going to right click here and we're going to delete the channels because we don't want no keyframes in there 
Um, I'm also going to come down to this brain icon here and click it. I've come up with like an, an X, uh, a circle with a cross in it. And basically that means that if you go through here, just scroll through, there's not going to be any simulation. So it means you can go through, you can add in keyframes, and that is just what we need. So if you come over to 15 frames in, we are going to change this to zero and press con uh, press alt and left mouse click that'll add in a keyframe we're now going to come over to around about 25 we're going to change this to a thousand it will automatically add in a keyframe because we have the auto keyframe here if you have this off you can just click alt and click again uh, next we're going to move it one frame in and we're going to change it to 20. And we're going to come to 60 for our last keyframe and change that to zero so it kind of has like like nothing there to it building up to its highest and then dropping suddenly and slowly going down which is what we want we don't want the explosion carrying on for too long um, or else it will be a bit crazy and it'll be filling the whole screen up and that is not what we want so i have already got a camera uh, placed in here just so we can have like a bit of a dramatic kind of look um, if we disable this now or enable our simulation to proceed we can play it and if I just scroll through this really quickly you'll see the explosions a lot more than what it was before which is exactly what we want now what we want to do is you want to come over to the volume source yeah, if I just quickly escape that go back uh, come over to the volume source now we can change the temperature as well as the scale of the fuel that's being released so I'm just going to change the scale I'm going to click on it uh, uh, right click on it and delete channel because there's keyframes there and we want to keep it at 1 the temperature on the other hand we want to turn it down to 0 0.1 and um, we're going to come back to the pyro solver we're going to come over to the second frame uh, the second tab in come down to flames and we're going to change this down to 1.34 this basically means that there's not going to be a very heavy amount of fire in this simulation which we don't need we mostly need just the smoke so if we play this back now all right so if we scroll back through this now see we've got the explosion comes out and yeah so now we need to add in a bit of bit of form to this um, pyro effect now so what I'm going to do is we're actually going to go into the pyro solver we're going to come over to shape so this is where we shape our pyro effect uh, the explosion uh, and the smoke so I am going to just uncheck that and the rest I'm going to leave as they are so now what I want to do is I want to actually change up a couple of these settings uh, nothing too crazy um, but I'm going to change this one here to uh, 0.119 and this one here to like one, uh, 0.128 I reckon and we're just going to bump that one up and place that one roughly around about there um, we are going to come over to the turbulence we're going to change the swell a little bit. We're going to boost that all the way up, actually. Uh, the grain, bring that down. Pulse length, I'm going to leave it as it is. Seed is just randomizing it a little bit. You can change to whatever you like, really. The influence um, threshold, I am going to... I might bump that up a tad. Nothing too crazy. Uh, and for this, I'm going to go to... I think around about five or six. Let's, let's stick with five and we'll see what that does now. I'm also um, quickly going to come over to the smoke object and just check on the density. And if we play this back now, let's move that out a tad and just play that in. You got the explosion. It's kind of formed a little bit more of a, a couple of mushroom effects there which looks quite nice. You've got the bullet trail coming through here. This doesn't look too bad at the moment. 
I'm kind of happy with it. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple of these settings now. So this one here basically means if you have a, a higher number, which means that this smoke effect will disappear quicker. If you have a lower value, it will stay on for a lot longer. The shredding kind of like uh, distorts and adds a bit of a grain effect um, to the overall smoke. Uh, the turbulence here basically adds in like these kind of like mushroom effects. Um, and this just adds a bit more detail into it. So I'm fairly happy with that. I think we can work our way through that. Uh, let's play that back. I don't think it's coming out too quickly. Might need to um, turn this up a little bit more just so it disappears a little quicker. Uh, but to test that out, we're going to actually have to play through this a lot more to find when it actually disappears. So I'm going to go to around about 90 and I'll be back with you in a second. So it's now done 90 frames in and we've got a bit of a disappearance there. Um, and I reckon we can always change this in post, uh, which will be in part two. But yeah, I kind of like this effect. I think we've done well for part one. I'm just going to um, quickly change one little thing, uh, which is come over to the Pyro Solver and the Simulation, and I'm going to change this to 20. Uh, it just means it pushes out a little bit quicker. Um, and before we render this, um, or save it, sim it out, you want to come over to the Smoke object, and we're going to change the division size to 0.02 and just click out of that now that will add a lot more detail to the smoke and the fire itself if we come back to the obj uh, network and come over to the pyro input and this one here the dot i slash o we want to come up to save to file and we're going to change the start and end range we're going to change the end one to 120 because I don't think the smoke is going to stay up for longer than uh, 90 frames to 100 maybe I'm not 100% sure but 120 should be perfect so um, if you go ahead and save that to wherever you want to save it um, what I normally do is um, I normally set my project and it creates the file path for me but if you haven't done that uh, just select this copy find the location you want it, paste it there and accept. And then what you want to do is you want to save it. You can either save to disk or save to disk in background. And yeah, that's um, it for part one, guys. And I will see you in part two.